actually thank you all for attending this this session. Uh, my name is Mike Legiro. Uh, I'm a, actually a professional biologist uh, for my career. Um, Sandcut Outdoors is the name of the company. Sandcut is the original name for the town that I live in, which is Gouldsboro, which is in Northeast PA, south of Scranton, by about 15 miles. For today, the first lecture I'm doing today is basically on how to identify plants. I got these two books, Peterson's Guide to Edible Plants and Peterson's Guide to Medicinal Plants. And I went out armed with righteous vigor and went out to take on the world and I'm lucky I didn't poison myself today. Yeah, I have one and I just... Because the, the, the first thing I'm going to tell you, and if you take nothing else away from today, positively identify what you're looking at. I feel like it's one of those gang shots in the movie. Like, uh, the warriors are going to go meet the... Uh... Okay, these are wild onions. We're going to need something to dig with it. So, um, someone want to borrow this? Just make sure we replace our divots. And you can also use... Now, to get the wild onions out, you're going to want to kind of come in around from a distance. Carve around the outside to loosen the soil and then come in kind of pop out a chunk and that'll end up helping to loosen since we don't have a digging stick that'll kind of help loosen up some of the some of the onions and then once you get this up you can kind of break it apart and if you look right there those white things should be the onions they don't really have a bulb on these because these are these are small and just and been mowed frequently if we're going to get some uh We'll get some gill over the ground for some tea if you guys have the ability to heat Gillo? some water. Gill, G-I-L-L, -L, over the ground. Okay, what does that look like? Actually, that looks like... Oh, there. Um, that? Right here, that's right here. So, oh, really? Yeah, folks that were here in the first one, we're, we're just gonna start collecting this stuff now. Crush it and smell it. It's a, it's a type of mint. Now, what is, what is the best way to grab that? Should we grab them with the bulb attached or take the bulb off? And that is also no, I eat the bulb. I mean, because actually when you, when you buy like a commercial yeah. onion, the only part you eat is the bulb. Okay, so I'm kind of surprised he's got it. If, you, if you're not familiar with the wood sorrel, here's, it, 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 basically it's the same thing as a shamrock. Yeah. Shamrocks it is, are just it is bigger. A shamrock. Yeah, it's it is. the same, it's same genus. So you only, you only, only use the, you only use the, um, you just use the leaves. But you can add them in salad. You're familiar with that at all? Um, what's, what's the difference between a white and a red? Yeah. Just for yeah. Paint. Yeah, the more you. The more you use it in the summer, yeah. I can smell these pretty good in the... When you're mowing? Yeah, that, that, that just like, smells like spring, wow, like, like early summer. That's a, one of the... Just when dandelion. you start They're mowing. It looks exactly like a white one. I've yeah, see, they got some bulbs on that one. Yeah. has some... That one's kind of squished the bulb. I'm going to squish it. the plantain grows... These large leaves are burdock leaves. These are first year. It's a two year growth cycle. It's a biennial plant. Um, this grows no flower the first year. It focuses on photosynthesis to put store carbohydrates in its root. That's what we're looking for. This is the second year growth. Okay, this is what you actually want to dig out the tap root uh, for. Actually, a leaf isn't this little thing. A leaf is Oh, is, is that whole thing? It's just oh. a finely divided leaf. Yes. So. That's the whole leaf. What does it smell like? Carrot. It smells like teen spirit. Just dated yourself. Is that wild rose? I'm trying to figure out what that is. Congratulations. No, that's on a vine. Yeah, so that's on a rose. It's poison. Actually, that is poison ivy. It's poison ivy. <laughs> yep. The stuff in here with the purple with the purple flowers. Okay. This actually, and if you look, you can see kind of a a dark chevron shape right there. Yeah. Like a like a mm -hmm. corporal oh, stripe. Looks like someone stuck their thumb, like a little thumbprint. Yeah. The leaves of this are edible. Oh. Okay. And it doesn't really taste like much. There's other things in this. It's it's a knotweed, and again, you got oh, oh. you got joints. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the joints, the joints have. The, the base of the leaf is kind of clasping like a little skirt around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that jointed, yeah, clasp, clasping leaves on a jointed stem is a characteristic of uh, this. It's, a, it's in the buckwheat family. And uh, 
just about yeah most of the smaller ones like this are edible um, there's two in particular polygonum hydropiper and hydropiperoides which grow in wetlands and uh, they've got real almost like a wasabi like tang to them uh, real peppery kind of flavor these I, yeah if you eat these these are edible but they don't really taste like much Again, if you have latex allergies, this is a latex producer, so you might want to avoid it, and not go into anaphylaxis. Uh, that would suck. So, <laughs> at edibility, the younger stems can be peeled and eaten mm -hmm. and cooked. The leaves can be eaten just like lettuce, because it's just lettuce. It's like almost like a romaine Spring. kind of thing. Spring. They get very bitter, but it's also well, a great medicinal. Well, again, the reason that, that uh, as far as bitterness, the reason that uh, what the hell? Dandelions came over in the first place was, we, in, in America we don't eat bitter foods, but European cuisine Big. has a lot of bitter foods to it. It's not going to give you a real buzz. It's not a narcotic. <laughs> yeah. It's not a narcotic. But, but it does it have is. pain relieving capacity. Okay, this is Polygonum cuspidatum, Japanese knotweed. Oh. Same family. Early season, the shoots are edible. Mm -hmm. You kind of peel them and, and they, they have calcium oxalate just like rhubarb. Mm -hmm. A little bit tangy, you can make pickles out of them. Uh, this stuff right now is just going to be way too, way too bamboo-like and woody. Wow. That's cool. Oh. But yeah, they're hollow. But again, they've got the, they're, they're jointed. If you look at the leaves, they got a little skirt around the leaves. Can you make a whistle? I was going to say, can you make a flute? I suppose you might be able to. But if you, if you just actually like suck on the pith of it, it doesn't taste like much now. It just tastes woody. Would it be carb? Would it be carbohydrate benefit? It may be if you were really that desperate. I mean, it doesn't have the same taste, but it's not going to be poisonous. Right. That's why they call it stinging well, nettle. Inside the prickles are formic acid, which is the same thing that ants inject when they bite you, and histamines. Okay, so not only is it going to hurt you, it's actually going to cause you to swell up and cause your body to react adversely to it. And the reason they do that is to prevent things from eating it. It's, it's chemical warfare on a on a plant level. What is that? Stinging nettle. It's it's oh. actually, it's actually slender nettle, which is a subspecies of stinging nettle. If you if you actually cook it, it denatures the it, yeah, the the acid breaks down. It denatures the the histamines. And uh, one guy on Bushcraft USA I know actually eats this on a regular basis. If oh. you know, guys, yeah, it's, no, it's actually oh. supposedly very tasty. It's, That's mullen, yeah. Yeah, mullen. Common mullen. Yeah. You can, you can eat the leaves. You can make tea out of the leaves. Uh, people supposedly use it for toilet paper. I don't know if I'd actually want to do that, but I don't well, like if it. Well, you got Word nothing good. else, it might be good because it's soft. <laughs> well, I don't know if those little fuzzies, never having done it, I don't know if those little fuzzies are going to stick in your backside or not. No, no. no. they actually call no. it cowboy toilet paper. Well, I know they call it that, but they... I've <laughs> used it. It's, okay. it's velvet. It's not prickly. <laughs> See, I'm not, not a cowboy, at all. So for cowboys, it might work. <laughs> it's um, velvet. Just don't turn I, it over. I, I, but I, this I, is actually the second year, kind of like the burdock. It's biennial plant this is the second year growth with the flower spike you'll get fuzzy you'll get fuzzy leaves in a basil rosette for the first year or cooked leaves yeah okay yeah and it's it's used used for basically chest congestion and chest colds yeah. okay ear infections okay. you can make candles out of it you can make candles out of it you soak a leaf in beeswax and you roll it vertically really and you burn it and we get big tall stalks it's almost like a like a rush light yeah and you can burn them and they'll burn for hours what's that it's you wait, you're wait for a reaction. Well, you, you may be, but for the most part, most people aren't allergic to everything. But you want to wait for a reaction, put it down. Tastes like an old, tasteless turnip. Turnip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A woody. Yeah. You know, well, woody, and it, there may be some. And again, like I mentioned, I don't know if it was this, this time or last time, but a lot of plants, once they go to flower, change internally chemically. 